morning, everyone. Welcome to Tiger Covenant Church. If you happen to be in that possible, let the church say amen. 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 I'm Pastor David Greenwich, and I'm so good to see you this morning. There's a scripture in Psalm 100, and this is what it says. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And I love this next verse. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever and his faithfulness endures to all generations. Let's give Jesus a hand. Clap. He is here this morning. And we praise him. We need to pray this morning. We'd like you to reach out even across the aisle if you want and grab your neighbor's hand as a sign of community and a sign of being one together. And we're going to pray and ask God to bless and be upon us all. Father God, we just thank you so much. We can be in your house, worshiping you. We answer your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We bless your name. Jesus, be Lord of our service. Bring your healing presence. Let your salvation be known here at Tiger Covenant Church and churches around the world. We celebrate your Holy Spirit. Your glory is in this house. And we say, Holy Spirit, fill us and use us to be light and salt and to do the work of the Lord. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Go greet somebody and say, you're in the house of the Lord. I'd like to speak to you on the subject of continuing, continuing in your faith. And then our subject today is totally complete in Christ. Last Sunday we spoke to you on the subject to continue in your faith. And this Sunday we're going to be talking to you about being totally complete in Christ. Being totally complete in Christ. And when that happens, thanks to God, healing comes. Brother Wayne said, Pastor, I'm going to be leading the worship this morning. It's going to be a healing message. And I said, Amen. I said, that fits in line with what the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart in Colossians 2.10. So let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 to 15. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 to 15. And after I read, I will say the word of the Lord. And together we say, thanks be to God. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him, you will also circumcise with the circumcision not performed by human hands. The whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Final verse. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, bless your word to our hearts. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. May we be doers of your word and do what you say. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say it. Amen. You may be seated. If you have a Bible, I'd like you to follow along with me. Um, if you need a Bible, we have some actual Bibles in the back. My left, your right, and the rear. Go grab one because we're going to be looking at a lot of scriptures today. And I think as we look at the Word of God together, we are going to be blessed. Today is the conclusion of a two-part sermon series. And last Sunday I spoke to you on continuing in your faith. And today I'll be speaking to you about being complete in Christ. Both texts I got out of the book of Colossians. And to review last Sunday, because it connects to the thought of being complete in Christ, I want you to remember what was stated last week, because it's a good introduction. Last week, we talked about continuing in your faith. And we said, number one, that we're to stay grounded and rooted in your faith in Christ. 
Number two, we also said don't follow false and erroneous teachings to influence or lead you away from the gospel. And then number three, we said keep serving the Lord by continuing in your faith. Then I gave you three practical principles that will help you in your faith walk. And suggestion number one is read and meditate and study on a passage from the Bible on a daily basis. And then number two, I said study the Bible with a fellow believer at least once a week together. And then number three, I said share the gospel with a non-believer at least once a week. And then number four, I said serve or give back as unto God to someone at least once. So with those four suggestions, this is a rhetorical question, and actually this morning I'm going to do a Q&A, which is I'll be asking you some questions later on in the sermon, and then from the congregation, I want you to give me answers. Just kind of raise your hand a little bit and give me an answer. Just give me a short one-sentence answer. But this first question is rhetorical. What it means, I just want you to think about it. I don't want you to answer. So here's a rhetorical question. Have you put into practice, and this applies to passage too, have you put into practice these four things in your life over the last week. Number one, have we been reading God's word daily and meditating? Number two, do we study the Bible together with another believer sometime during the week? You can do it at home with a friend or with your spouse. You can come to Sunday morning, 8.30 Bible study we have. You can come Tuesday night Bible study. You can come to Thursday night uh, time of a worship practice, uh, is prayer, and those often devil will give an exhortation word. When you gather with other believers once a week in the Word of God, in addition to Sunday morning, strengthens you as God's children to be on point, to do what He has for you to do, and for you to be victorious, and for you to overcome the snares of the devil that he tries to entrap Christians. Let the church say amen. amen. I'm going to be strong against the attack. And I know I want to. When he comes to me and plants a seed and plants a lie in my mind, I want to be able to say no because I've been studying God's word. And then number four, are you rhetorical question? Are you giving back? Are you serving the self And We have many opportunities in this church to serve. We have a food pantry every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. And Esmeralda and the team is here and they are serving food to people. And then on Tuesday night, we have a free community dinner at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7. And the team is here serving food and ministering to people that want a meal. Many of our members come and then people from the community come. And then we have vacation Bible camp that's coming up. Another opportunity to serve. You heard Natasha just talk to you about July the 16th to the 21st in the evening from 6.15 to 8.15. A time of gathering children and serving them food and meeting parents and reading with them. We have ministries in the church that need help in the office and keeping the building premises up and organizing. God has given you all of those gifts. You can serve in the community by seeing people that have needs, people that need to be taken somewhere with transportation. I got a, a call this morning from someone that says, Pastor, I need some furniture moved. Do you know somebody in your church that has a pickup truck? And can I get some of my furniture moved? And so if you need, uh, have a vehicle and you would like to help us in the end of services, there's constant things that come my way and comes to the attention of the leadership in this church and other churches where people need help. And if you're on point and you're saying to yourself, I want to serve, the Bible says you'll be blessed. Now, we don't serve to be blessed, but we serve because we've been loved by God. He's commanded us to bless, and we've experienced the joy in serving others. I think we all can say amen to that. So that was last Sunday, continuing your faith. Now I want to have the, the, the complete thought to the subject matter by being totally complete in Christ. Last Sunday we talked about heresies and that there was Gnosticism, which was a teaching in the first century, right after Christ went back up to heaven and many of the philosophers and the Stoics, they were teaching things that had to do with Gnosticism. And Gnosticism was this belief system that says, if you gather in secret groups, and I talked about that last week, and if you gather with groups of people and you kind of hide and do things off the radar, and if you study real hard, and if you listen to philosophy, and then if you uh, do things of the depriving yourself of different things and dietary foods that you only can eat certain foods and 
then it was actually a lifestyle of licentiousness, which means a lifestyle where they were getting into sexual activities and immorality, and they were doing all this stuff, and that's what the Gnostics taught. And in addition to that, they denied the deity of Christ. Meaning that Jesus is God, Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus is the way of salvation, and so they denied that. And so I said, beware of people coming upon you and giving you thoughts and telling you to go to places and study doctrines and teachings that are contrary to the Word of God. And so what the thought today is that you and I are complete in Christ, and because we're complete in Christ, we don't have to fall prey and be deceived by these theories and these heresies and these teachings, but we can stay grounded and we can stay rooted in the Word of God because we have the best there is and we don't have to go anywhere else. Let's church say amen. Look at what it says in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Isn't that an amazing scripture? All the fullness of the deity. What does that mean? Well, God expresses himself in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When you have Jesus, you have God. When you have Jesus, say to God, you have the Holy Spirit. I'm getting excited. Because the Holy Spirit is what keeps us and moves us and allows us to have our being, have our being. We have everything we need when we become a child of God. And when we walk by faith, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. How many of you have given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? Raise your hand. Amen. When you say yes to the Lord, you ask Him to come in your heart. You receive Him by faith. And once you become a child of God, you have to be He's my Savior. I can say amen to that. We have God the Father, we have God the Son, and we have God the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is a powerful part of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is what's leading you right now to understand the scripture that you're reading right now. The Holy Spirit is leading you as you have decisions to make and as you come across opportunities and you come across challenges. The Holy Spirit that quickens your mind and quickens your thought and helps you to talk to people and helps you to keep your mind on Christ. The Holy Spirit has a lot for us today. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to speak the gospel. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to use the gifts of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us the power to walk in holiness and not to fulfill the gratifications of the flesh. All right, let me unpack those four things I just told you. And if you have your Bible's term, the first one is the Holy Spirit gives you the power to speak the gospel. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and the first verse. Actually, we'll go to Acts chapter 2. Change in Acts chapter 2 in the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And here it is, verse 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Isn't that something? The Holy Spirit gave them the power to speak. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to speak. Now swoop down to verse 11 in that same chapter. And notice that we'll find out what they were speaking. And both Jews and converts to Jerusalem, Cretans and Arabs, we heard them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Hallelujah. See, when you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you're able to speak the wonders of God. And what was the wonders of God? They were speaking the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel was that Christ came, that he died on the cross, that he uh, suffered by Pontius Pilate, that he suffered by those uh, awful soldiers, that he was jeered by the crowd, and he died. That's the gospel. And then the gospel is also that he arose again on the third day. And the Bible says that he ascended up to heaven after he arose again and he declared himself to the disciples and to 500 others. He arose again and he ascended to heaven and he is coming back. He is our 
soon coming king. And he is coming back for all of us that love him. That's the gospel message. And say to God, when you have the gospel in your spirit because you've been saved, you can speak the gospel. The Holy Spirit also gives us the power to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. The Holy Spirit will give you the power to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Look and see what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we, here it is, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gives you and I the power to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. You just keep following God's Word, reading His Word, coming to church, and the Holy Spirit will bear fruit in your life. You know, the more I come to church, the more I love people. The more I come to church and read His Word, we got into studying God's Word an hour before service. The more I love my brothers and sisters that are in the study with me. That's love. The more I have the Holy Spirit working in my life, I can have, what are the other fruit? Peace. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. It's the Holy Spirit that will allow that fruit to be born in my life. But instead of the fruit of the Spirit, instead of that, if I have the deeds of the flesh operating, contention, strife, gossip, backbiting, even hate, I allow the flesh to take root in my life, saying, and the Spirit is not having its way. See how the Spirit has a role in the life of a Christian now, so important the Holy Spirit? So the Holy Spirit gives us the power to use the gifts of the Spirit and the power to manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Let's do the gifts next. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to see the gifts of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit gives us the power to manifest the fruit of the Spirit, and now the Holy Spirit gives us the power to use the gifts of the Spirit. What are the gifts? Well, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray of new idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for a common good. So the gifts of the Spirit are to edify and build up the body of Christ for our common good. In one, there is given through the Spirit, verse 8, a message of wisdom. So that's a gift of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge, a word of knowledge, that's another gift. By means of the same Spirit, to another, faith, the gift of faith. That means you can just believe God for the impossible, for the miraculous. God will give you a gift. By the same Spirit to another, the gift of healing. So have the gift of healing where you can pray for people and results happen. It's a gift that God gives you. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. Some can speak the word of the Lord and prophesy with the same the Lord. To another, distinguishing between spirits. When you have the gift of discernment, you can distinguish between spirits. And to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another, the interpretation of tongues. So these are some of the gifts. And in the Romans, the gifts are also mentioned. And all of us have some gifts so that we can bless the body of Christ. And ultimately, we become a witness to the world. And then this last one that the Holy Spirit does, I love saints of God. The power to walk in holiness. Turn me to Hebrews chapter 12. The power to walk in holiness. Hebrews chapter 12. And let's look at verse 14. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See, if you don't have holiness in your life, you're not going to see the Lord. If you don't have the Holy Spirit working in your life, enabling you to be holy, you're not a Christian 
so you won't see him. So if you really said that you're a believer and you ask Jesus to come into your life, the holiness of God will descend on you. You'll find yourself doing things that God wants you to do more than what other people want you to do. So say to God, we are totally complete in Christ. Nothing else comes close. Everything else is a cheap imitation. The devil is trying to deceive Christians and others by giving them a fake replica of the real thing. God through Christ is the best that we can get. Don't be fooled. Continue in Christ. All right, turn back to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 says, For in Christ we have all the fullness of the deity. Verse 9, Colossians 2, 9. We have all the fullness of the deity that lives in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. So we have all that we need in Christ. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. We have all that we need to be complete. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Don't ever buy the lie of the devil when he tells you you're not worthy. You're not bad. You're no good. That's a lie. Because you have all you need in Christ. Everybody repeat after me. Say I, I have all, all I need. I and it's in Christ. And it's in Christ. Isn't that beautiful? And the next time the devil comes at you with a lie, and I'm telling you, saints, now that you have this teaching in your spirit, he will try it this week. I'm telling you, that's why he operates. The next time he comes at you, you say to the devil, you just speak it out loud as he comes into our thought patterns. And then how also the devil comes? Through other people. He comes through other people sometimes. Ooh, pastor, you trying to say people are used by the devil? Yes, I am. And when they come to you or the thought your mind. You just say to that person, so I have, a, I have all that I need in Christ. I love what you said, Sister Vicky. She puts her hand on the bed and prays a prayer that the chemotherapy will only do. You know, chemotherapy is a dangerous drug. It can mess up the good cells in addition to get the bad cells. So she's right on point. And you need to pray with wisdom so that the treatment that you get from the doctors will be to you. Let the church say amen. Amen. Now notice what else it also says. Verse 10, in, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you will also circumcise. All right, now Pastor David is just going to get real practical with you right now. Circumcision is the right where when a child is usually younger in age, the male child, the foreskin of the organ of the male child is cut. It was a practice to start in Jewish history and it's carried over to many cultures, even the practice here in America today, and many of you have been circumcised. So it's the cutting of the skin. Now notice he uses that word, circumcision, to make a good point. It says, in him you will also circumcise. So the word circumcised means to be cut. God is saying we're cut. Is he talking about physical cutting? No. With a circumcision, here it is, not performed by human hands, your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. So Christ wants to cut us. Is it a physical cut? No. He wants us to be marked. Or just like you bred an animal. He's the bred animal, so you know whose cattle it was. God wants you to be branded in your heart, in your emotions, in your spirit, with the person of Jesus Christ. So that when the devil sees you and me, he doesn't see Pastor David. He doesn't see Terry. He sees Christ in you. And you know what the devil does? He backs away. Do you realize that you and I have power because we have all the fullness of God in Christ that when we stand on that, and when we say, I have all that I need in Christ, I stand on the rock Christ Jesus. The hymn writer said, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When you stand on Christ and realize that it's in you, that you have your strength, that you have your healing, that you have your ability to do what thus saith the Lord, you will be blessed and you're going to overcome what the enemy wants to mess with you. You've been cut 
to the core, but not a human cutting. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism. What is baptism? The word baptized means to immerse. When you baptize someone, you immerse them in the water. How many of you have been baptized? Raise your hand. Praise God. Baptized, born again, on my way to heaven. Christians are loving it. And when you were baptized, you were immersed in the water. And baptism is symbolic of your confession of your faith. What happens? You go down in the water. You came to Christ. You were a sinner. You admitted that you're wrong. You admitted that you need God. You come up out of the water because when we baptize you, we don't leave you down there because we don't want to drown you. I've had people say to me when I'm baptizing people, Pastor, how long am I going to be in that water? So you know what I tell them? I said, hold your breath. It'll just be a few seconds. And if I see you're a really bad son, I leave you out in a couple of seconds more. I'm just, just, to, just to. So we take it down, and then we bring it up. And when you come up out of that water seat to God, I remember when I was baptized when I was 12 years old. It was a church down in Hall, New York, and it was a church that had a pipe, pipe organ, and they had a, all the saints, and saints of God were praising God, and I could just feel the beams of heaven coming up. For me, it felt like I was just being purged or cleansed of all the bad stuff. You know, I told you my testimony. Grew up in the South Bronx of New York, had an anger problem, was a fighter, a cussing, a swear. And when I said yes to Jesus at age 12, I'm telling you, saying that cussing slowly started to go away. Didn't happen instantaneously. Next few weeks, I came out on the court, someone did something, I said, you yeah. had to hold my mouth. Not cussing out. And went away. And saying to God, I came up out of the water and I just felt cleansed. I felt clean. So when you were baptized, you had your old self and you came up to new life in Christ. Those of you that know your Bible, 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new state together in creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Everything of your life, something new happens in your life. Something new experience in Christ. In your life, well, God will give you a word because you're not in the word. Remember what we talked about earlier? Stay in the word every day. Stay in the word with other believers once a week. Looking for opportunities to serve other people during the week. When you're doing that, when you're serving, when you're staying in the word, God will deposit something new in your spirit every day. That's what gets me excited. I'm excited about serving God. Oh, yeah, I have problems. I have obstacles. I have things that get me mad sometimes, things that get me upset, things that I can be depressed about. But Jesus is coming at me every day and he's blessing me with something new. And because that blessing comes, I can go on another day and do what he wants me to do. In baptism, you will also raise with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So you and I rise up from our dead life. You and I rise up from our old self. And every day, we rise up to something new. And so every day, we should be saying, to, we should be saying one to another, what's new happening in your life? What new word did God deposit in your spirit? What new thing has God done for you today? You know, sometimes when you hear people give their testimony, and, and Vicki, you didn't do this today when you gave your testimony. Have you ever heard a Christian give a testimony? And this is how it goes. 20 years ago, when I was walking with the Lord, and he did A, B, and C for me, and I'm thinking, what has he done for you today? Not 20 years ago. And say to God, if you're walking with God on a daily basis, and you're opening up your heart to the Word of God, and you're reading His Word, and you're serving, and you're giving, your faith will give us, God will deposit something new that's wonderful, and you're going to be blessed. Look at what it says in verse 13. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh. In other words, you weren't cut by God. You weren't touched by God. You weren't saved yet. But when you were dead in your past, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all of our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness. Say to God, is it true? Everybody on the planet has an account that they have to bring current with God. Here's your account. 
they fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 20, Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. How many have a job or had a job or want a job? Raise your hand. I think every hand should be up. Somebody had a job, wants a job, or has a job currently. Every hand should be up. So here it is. Your wage that you get when you work is money. And God's word here says it clearly. The wages for your sin is death. We all deserve to die. But then the verse didn't stop there. In Romans 6, 22, it says, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I love that verse. Since God, nobody need perish. Need perish and go into eternity without God. Nobody needs to go to hell. God wants to desire his heart's desires that everybody come to heaven. And saints God, here it is. That is my evangelism coming out. When you have that new stuff going on in your life every day because you've been reading your word, because you've been serving, because you've been doing what God wants you to do, saying to God, it'll help you be a better witness for Jesus Christ. I think the reason why sometimes we don't have anything to tell anybody about to the Lord, and sometimes we're a little timid about telling the Lord and telling other people about the Lord and telling other people about the gospel. I don't talk fast because my time is almost up, but I'm so excited. It's because God has not done anything new in your life because you're not walking in faith and obedience. You're walking in sin. You've departed yourself from the saints of God. You've isolated yourself and the devil's making men's meat of you. Come back to church. Get back. Thank you have to 
greedy uh, person that falls to the trick of the enemy, see to God, we walk in victory. Amen. And we walk in the power of Christ. Amen. And we are complete in Christ Amen. to do his work. How many of you feel that God spoke to your heart this morning? Say it again. Amen. I didn't do the Q&A on the sermon because I had too many scriptures I had to get to. I'll give it to you next week. We just stand to your feet.